Welcome back to Monday Mod Tips. I'm Captain Xavier. Today we're going to be covering locks and lock removal. This was a, a request in the comments. So I'm going to go over the basic locks that exist in most stock springers. Now, not all of them have them and some have different locks, but these are the three that you generally see. I'm going to cover what their original purpose is for, why you might not want to remove them, what advantages there are to removing them, and then I'm going to show you how to actually remove them. So, the three basic locks that you generally see in your stock springers is a mag release lock, which makes it so you cannot um, pull the mag release if the bolt is forward. This is so you don't, you know, try to pull your magazine out while the bolt is going through it, which could break the magazine, break the bolt, jam things, cause all sorts of problems. So that is what that lock does. The next one is the trigger lock, which prevents you from pulling the trigger when the slide is back. The reason being, if you were to pull the trigger while the slide is back, it would slam the whole thing forward, which would not be good. It could, again, cause damage, it could cause jams, it could cause all sorts of problems. It's also going to cause it probably to fire very, very poorly, if at all. Probably not at all. And then the final lock is the slide lock, which prevents you from pulling the slide back while the blaster is primed, which prevents you from double loading, which in most stock blasters would simply cause a jam. So the two that are most commonly removed are the slide lock and the trigger lock. The reason that these are removed is that if you take both of those locks out, you are then able to deprime the blaster, which is very useful if you're dealing with a heavily modified blaster that has a very heavy spring load. You don't want to leave it primed, and you don't want to dry fire it. So if you have primed it, uh, and you don't want to fire it, you then would need to be able to re turn the, return the slide back and then pull the trigger and slowly let the slide move forward, which you can't do with those two locks engaged. Uh, some people only remove the trigger lock so that they can prime it back but haven't primed it forward yet. Then you would still be able to deprime it, but if you've primed it and slid the slide forward, then you would need both locks to be able to deprime it. The magazine release lock, there really is no particularly good reason to remove that one because you don't want to try to pull the magazine out when the bolt is forward because that's not good for either. Uh, the, the magazines just aren't designed for it and you, you're on the risk of breaking it or even breaking your bolt or misaligning your bolt or any number of other things. Uh, but I will show you how to remove it just for academic purposes, but I'm definitely going to show you how to remove those other two. So let's get this thing open so we can gut it. All right, now that we have it open, we can see all of the locks, and it's pretty much this cluster of parts right here in this particular blaster. They're in different places in other blasters, but you can get kind of a feel for how the parts work from this one. This one, this white bit right here is your trigger lock, and it is designed in such a way that when the bolt is forward, the lock is disengaged and the trigger can be pulled. When the bolt is slid back, this, this part is pushed down and it locks the trigger. So, if we want to take that one out, we first have to remove the trigger. And then it will simply lift out. The next white piece over to the left is the magazine release lock, and it works in pretty much the opposite way that the trigger lock does, which is when the bolt is forward, the lock pushes up and locks the magazine release, whereas when the bolt goes all the way back, it then forces the lock down, and that releases the, the magazine release, and you can then remove the magazine. And once you slide it forward, that piece moves back up again and again locks it. So it's locked until you get to the very back. And if you do want to remove it, which like I said, I don't recommend, um, it literally just lifts right out from, from there. And now you can operate your mag release no matter what position it is in. And that's fairly simple. The final lock is the bolt sled lock, which prevents you from double priming the blaster or priming it once it's already been primed. Um, and it is connected to the bolt sled and it is this part that pushes down. 
When you prime it, it pushes down and locks down, which allows the bolt to then slide forward and back. And then once it releases, returns to the fully returned position, that lock pops back up again, and that is what then locks it while the plunger is back. Once the plunger moves forward from having been primed, then it uh, pushes that down enough that it can then slide under uh, and will get pushed down again. It doesn't work very well when you don't have the sides together to keep everything perfectly aligned. But that is what allows that. Now, to remove it, you remove the entire bolt assembly and you simply take out that part and its spring. So we'll have that housing. I generally keep the housing in place just so I know where it is and so that everything still kind of fits together properly. Most of your fancy upgrade bolts won't even have that part because they know you need to be able to deprime it so they don't bother to put that lock in at all. Now we can put that part back in. Put our catch back in. Put our trigger back in. Mainspring. Jam door. All right, now we can put the other half of the shell on in order to demonstrate. And there's a couple of uh, tricks to keep in mind here. One is making sure that uh, you get the slide lined up on both sides. The other is to make sure that the plunger is not too far forward. This is something that tends to make it very difficult to get the shell back together. The plunger needs to be far enough back, which generally means that you don't put your spring in quite all the way. You don't want the spring under tension yet. Um, you put the two halves on, you get it to lock in, and then you can push the spring the rest of the way in and put your cap on there to keep it from wandering. So with the locks out, I can now you, um, operate the mag release even when the bolt is forward. I can prime it as many times as I want, which if you had a strong enough blaster with a sealed breach or something, and you're using half darts, you might want to double load, which would allow you to then fire two darts at once. The Caliburns can do this. Um, uh, other heavy blasters might be able to, range might, uh, obviously is gonna suffer, but it would allow you to double load. But the real reason that um, you take the slide lock off is so that you can, here we'll take this cap off, so you can see what's going on. You can see that it is primed. And if you were to just pull the trigger at this point, it does slam the whole thing forward, which is definitely not something you want to do on a, uh, a modified blaster, but this one's stock, so it's not likely to do much damage. But I can now, if I hold the, the slide and pull the trigger, I can slowly deprime it, uh, which is often useful, especially if you realize that you're... There's, there's no round and you don't want to dry fire. If you're just testing things and you don't want to dry fire, it's very useful to be able to deprime your blaster. So that is why people generally take the trigger and slide locks out. Now, we're going to put them back in. See if we can figure out how that works. So, we did not put any screws in, which makes that easy at least. So, the first one we're going to put in is the... Um, slide return, or the, yeah, the slide lock. Take those two screws back out. Put 
put the lock in so that the angled part is pointing towards the back of the blaster. So the slope is pointing back. If you put it in the other way, it will not work properly and it will be bad. There then is a little guidepost on the housing that will make sure that the spring is in the right position. Put it on and carefully screw it all together. Definitely want to be careful not to lose that spring because it is a fairly unusual size and weight. So that is that one done. Now, when you put the bolt, the, the plunger tube in, make sure that the side with the two notches are pointed down because that is the um, set and release for your bolt sled lock and if you have it upside down the blaster will not operate correctly so you need to make sure that the notches are in the groove on the far side and that those tabs are pointed down next one we're going to put in is the magazine release lock and it can be kind of tricky to get the spring in there correctly and it's important that you do but if you use just a screwdriver and compress it and then slide it down, you should be able to get it to stay in position. And then the trigger lock you are actually going to put onto your trigger and put them in together. The spring should be towards the bottom, as it were. And you'll need to lift up your bolt to get it on there. And make sure your trigger is in place. Catch goes in, spring down uh, or towards the bottom, but on the top side. If you put it in upside down, the blaster will not operate correctly. Now, you need to make sure that the bolt is all the way forward and that the slide lock is working correctly. Uh, if the slide lock is not working correctly, when you put it all back together, you won't be able to prime it. So... Make sure everything is still moving the way it should. Make sure and everything is aligned correctly. Make sure nothing is out of position. And then you can put the other side back on. Push your spring in. Put the end cap on. And before you put any more screws in, just give it a quick test. Uh, so that, you know, because otherwise you're going to put in half your screws, realize, oh, one of the locks is not in there correctly. So that lock now disengages when this is back. Trigger lock is engaged, and you can't prime it when it is already primed. So all of the locks are now in position. But that is the rundown on all of the, the major locks that are in your standard uh, stock spring blaster, what they're for, how they work, whether you need them or not, what their purpose is, what removing them allows you to do that you couldn't otherwise do, and whether I feel you should or shouldn't remove them. Um, I do recommend removing the trigger and slide locks if you're going to be heavily modifying it so you can deprime without dry firing. Don't recommend taking out the magazine release. Next week, I will cover the basic locks that you see in most of your electronic flywheel blasters. There's some similarities, but some differences. So we will go into that next, or next time, which will be in two weeks. Um, hope this was helpful to some of you, and thank you guys for watching.